grew up one of four kids in a suburb of Toledo called Oregon. I grew up in an intact family. Both mom and dad were in the home. Dad worked all the time. So mom was our primary caregiver. Um, I grew up Catholic because that's what my mom believed and that's what her mom believed. And so it was just expected that you would grow up Catholic. I grew up on a street with all older people. They were all old enough to be my grandparents, so we affectionately called them Miss J was our n immediate next door neighbor. And Grandma Susie lived across the street and we would help take care of them and they would refer to us as their grandkids and it was great. But it also had a downfall. When you got in trouble, they knew about it. So growing up in Oregon, it, where everybody knew who you were. By the time you got home and you had to walk past all the neighbors' houses, they asked you how your day was, just being friendly. And But then they're like, oh, why'd you get um, in trouble in so-and-so's class? Oh, man. Like, but it was great because it showed that they cared. And then moving away to go to college, it was a whole nother ball game. I was 17. I graduated when I was 20. Long and the short of it, I made a bunch of decisions in undergrad that I would not have made if I would have had a strong base to lean on. Like I was always a people pleaser. It was November of 2012 when I got offered a job at the prison. So I'm just like, okay, this is what I want to do. This is what I have my degrees in because the three degrees that I had gotten while I was working on my master's was um, forensic science, corrections, and law enforcement. So I'm like, okay, good way to get your foot in the door. The pay is great and plus it comes with benefits and it's full time. So I'm like, perfect. Well, the academy that they send you to is a four week academy where they you're only down there four days out of the week. It doesn't actually give you the reality of dealing with human beings that hate you for doing a job. So it's almost like a culture shock going in. The way I gained respect from the inmates was by giving respect and that in and its, of itself was rewarding because they're used to people treating them like they're less than human. One inmate told me that he was used to, used to officers treating them like animals and I'm like, well, you're no different than I am. You made a decision that broke a law or laws and it landed you here. We're all human. And from then on, it was like a game changer. Inmates showed respect. Inmates treated you like you were another human instead of just someone that was there to ruin their lives. Halfway through that, I think it was four months after I'd been into that pod or that housing unit, um, the administration of the prison decided to make a change. So every day on my way to work, I'd be like, hey God, um, <laughs> I'm going into work. I don't know if I'm gonna make it home at the end of the night. If it's your will, let me make it through the day. And that was every day on the way to work. On the way home, it's God, thank you for letting me make it through another day. One day I did make it home safe. Um, was November 22nd of 2013. I was 
doing my rounds, which is making sure all my inmates are alive and breathing. Well, this one inmate didn't like me. I was coming down a set of stairs and he was walking up the stairs and it was an everyday thing. It was like a power struggle to see who would move. He would always move because inmates always gave way to officers. Well, this time he swung on me and I didn't see it coming. He hit me 17 to 21 times in the span of 14 seconds. I've seen the video half a dozen to a dozen times and he just keeps swinging. And these are steel stairs, like they are not forgiving. It took almost a full minute for any other officer to come through that door. The last thing I remember is him walking toward me and next thing I know I'm waking up in the hospital, in the ICU. Yeah, first time I saw my face in the mirror was shocking. Um, I ended up with a traumatic brain injury, um, uh, what they call subluxed jaw. I had a bruised left lung. It takes time to forgive people. Um, I went to a fusion camp for sixth through eighth graders at Cedar Creek when I was still involved. But that day, it, they had you write the name of someone who hurt you on a post-it note. And see if you could write the words, I forgive you. Steven was there as a uh, cabin leader too. And he just came over and he goes, what did you do? And I showed him the post-it note and I wrote the inmate's name and I literally wrote the words, I forgive you. And that had to been the, one of the hardest things that I've ever done. Because at that moment, I was, I honestly forgave him. But what stuck out to me was that Jesus died for our sins. He took the cross for our sins. He forgave us for suffering as he did. How can we not forgive others?